Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Well, great performance, and I mean great performance, by Dylan White across the board. While I thought Prevetkin would win the rematch, Dylan White proved me wrong, although the White by KO hedge held, so I'm okay. But um, Dylan White, dominant performance, uh, the Marvin Hagler tribute robe, A+, plus. the ACDC back in black ring entrance, A+, plus. the great opening where Prevetkin is stumbling against the ropes. Right? White lands some shots. I understand. The shots weren't clean very early in the fight, but let's just say he had Prevetkin out of position and lodged on the ropes. Prevetkin looked shaky literally in the first minute of the fight. I thought that was as good a start as Dylan White could have expected in a rematch from a fight where the last punch thrown was a KO shot on him in the first match, right? Dylan White comes out, no fear whatsoever. It was impressive. I'll just put it that way. It was very impressive uh, in how he started the fight. Let me also say, too, that the fight was interesting because Dylan White was on the money with his jab, but you could tell he didn't want to throw the jab. I know that sounds paradoxical, right? He didn't want to throw the jab. Also, the first fight, the two knockdowns Dylan White had came off left hooks. Here, Dylan White was throwing right hooks, chopping right hands. He wanted a stoppage. He didn't want a decision, right? He saw the jab was working. That wasn't enough. He only used the jab to keep Povetkin away from him, right? Povetkin doesn't get up close in this fight the way he did the first fight, right? Also, Dylan White makes sure that he stays close to the middle of the ring, right? You might recall the KO in the first fight is right up against the ropes, right? It looks like Dylan White's head is in danger of hitting the bottom rope. Here, Dylan White, the few times he's caught over in the side of the ring, brings the fight back to the middle of the ring. So White, a great jabber, in my opinion, de-emphasizes the jab. Right? He's trying to land heavy right hooks. Understand, it's on White's right side that Prevetkin KO'd him last time. So I thought the last round was interesting. Understand, officially Dylan White wins by KO, right? Um, he gets Prevetkin down once, officially. Actually, he knocks Prevetkin down twice in the round. He hits Prevetkin with a chopping right hand, and it's a chopping right hand that causes Prevetkin to fall into the ropes. Folks, it's a knockdown if the ropes hold you up. That was the only thing holding up Povetkin at that point, right? Well, what's interesting is the accuracy. Because after Povetkin bounces off the ropes, after getting hit with a chopping right hand, Dylan White is there with another right hand. So he hits Povetkin with a right hand. It's the second right hand in a row. Right? He hits Povetkin, who's reeling, who was knocked down off the first right hand, but the ref doesn't call it. As Povetkin leans back into the ring, Dylan White greets him with a second right hand. It's that second right hand. In other words, that right hook could not miss. It's the second right hand that causes Povetkin to stagger across the ring where Dylan White goes over there with a great left hook that ends the fight. Right? Excellent stoppage, but understand, even if the referee, after Povetkin hits the canvas and gets up on extremely shaky legs, 
even if the referee did not stop the fight. Provetkin's corner threw in the towel. That fight was not continuing. Provetkin's corner knew that this fight was over. Now, let me just say this about Dylan White. There's a weight disparity here. Dylan White comes in weighing 247, right? Something like 20 pounds more than Provetkin. While I thought Provetkin moved better than Dylan White in terms of just speed of movement and range, even a staggered Provetkin, right? Because Provetkin looks hit up early in the fight. Looks like he's on shaky legs, but you notice he's still moving better than Dylan White, one man's opinion. Dylan White throws several home run punches, but you notice Provetkin's too far away from them. The punches seem to miss Provetkin by like an inch or two. In other words, Provetkin can see it coming and can move. Right? Just understand that Dylan White here, if you look at this fight, married with the first fight. The first fight, Dylan White's landing a jab, isn't he? The first fight, Dylan White is landing a left hook, isn't he? Gets the two knockdowns. The first fight, Dylan White isn't afraid to be back up against the ropes. This fight, Dylan White's landing a right hook. Right? He's hunting with the right hook. This fight, he goes hunting. Right? He closes it with a left hand. Two handed power. Enough of a game where he could make a decision not to rely on his jab. I get the feeling that that decision not to rely on his jab completely confused Alexander Povetkin, who got hit with too many right hooks in this bout. He seemed baffled, right? Seemed baffled to me. So Dylan White is dangerous. No question about it. He's in the mix. They were talking about him fighting Deontay Wilder. Let me ask a foundational question. Why? At this point, Dylan White, who has proven himself, right? He's proven himself. He's now in his 30s, right? Should be thinking about belts, shouldn't he? White himself said after the fight, look, Eddie keeps putting me in with tough guys, right? I want an easier guy so I can make some money, right? If I'm Dylan White, player, you've proved yourself, right? He even said, hey, I'll fight Provetkin again. No, 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 no. You just picked up the WBC diamond belt, whatever that is. You should be the mandatory contender. My point to you is, you're the most credible opponent outside of Alexander Usyk to fight the winner of Joshua Fury. I know they have a two-fight deal and stuff like that. Okay, fair enough. But understand, things happen. Fighters get cut. Stuff like that happens. Let me also say, too, Alexander Usyk, if he wants to make a name for himself and gain credibility... Right? One of the first people he has to fight, if he gets the title, is Dylan White. So if I'm Dylan White, I'm not sure if I would take another fight before fighting for the title. Right? He made good money here. He made good money on the first fight against Prevetkin. Right? Dylan White's been busy. During this pandemic era, certainly more busy than Tyson Fury, right? So Dylan White's made enough money, hopefully, to say, okay, look, I want my next fight to be a title fight. I don't care what bad blood exists, what text message exists between Deontay Wilder and Dylan White. Deontay Wilder, God bless him, doesn't have a belt right now. Right? Dylan White needs to ask himself, do you want to be the, you know, 
mandatory contender or do you want to have a, a title? What can the winner of Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua say to Dylan White if he sits ringside at their bouts and says, I want the winner? Are one of those guys going to say, I'm sorry, you haven't done enough to warrant the title shot? Right? Understand, it's big box office. But at this point, White needs to be thinking about personal satisfaction. Right? The Dylan White who showed up today, this guy flashing right hooks and stuff like that, showing you skills he's not even using. Right? The jab's effective. Oh, I'm going to take my foot off the jab because I want to try to stop this guy. Right? This guy would give anyone a hard challenge. Right? Five stars for Dylan White. I was wrong on him here. I was expecting Povetkin to win. Uh, I'm glad I had the hedge. I'm glad I recommended White by KO as a hedge. Uh, I can live for another day. But um, let's just say Dylan White certainly showed today that he was not going to be stopped. I thought it was appropriate that he was wearing a Marvin Hagler tribute robe because the guy really was channeling Marvin Hagler. Even the first round, Dylan White comes out aggressively, right? Just like Marvelous Marvin would, right? Dylan White comes out aggressively in the first round, right? Dylan White is leaving nothing to chance. He wants nothing to do with the judges. Right, nothing to do with the judges. He's not there to impress anyone with a jab. No, no, no. He feels this guy is reeling. So he's throwing right hooks. Right? The guy gets off the ropes. Dylan White clearly has won the round. Dylan White's like, uh uh, here's another right hook. Here's a left hook. Let's go home. Great performance. If I'm him, my next stop is a title fight. I would not mess around with tune-ups. If there's one thing that doesn't truly exist in boxing, it's tune-ups, right? And we know Dylan White, who was in spectacular shape for this fight, has had some fights. The Oscar Rivas fight, where he showed up and he didn't really look in shape and stuff like that, right? If I'm him, I just... Keep my eyes on the prize. If you have to fight Deontay Wilder for personal reasons, have that fight after you have a title fight. Right? Fight the winner of Joshua Fury. Then you can pivot and say, look, I got some personal business. <laughs> I got some personal business I need to attend to. Deontay Wilder, come on down. Right? That's how you should work it. Because let's face it, if he has a fight against a Wilder or someone else, and it doesn't work out, he has the lapses that he had the first fight here, where his feet are together. You heard Darren Barker on the DAZN coverage talk about the problems that Dylan White had style-wise in his first fight against Povetkin. Right? This is a guy who was dropped three times in his last six fights, right? Gets up to win some of the fights, but he's been on the canvas. With that history, with some momentary lapses where he's out of shape for one fight, he's getting dropped, knocked out cold in another fight, to me, it's simply too risky if you're Dylan White and you have dreamt of being heavyweight champion, to me it's too risky to place other obstacles in front of you. Let the Wilder fight wait until you get your shot at the title. Have the boxing press confront Fury, Joshua, Usyk. Say, hey, when are you going to fight Dylan White? I'm just telling you the question will come up, especially since White has already beaten Joseph Parker. Right? Food for thought.
and of course now Alexander Povetkin. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.